this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. I came into my craft room today to record a completely different video and my eyes fell on this. This is a little purse. I got this about 15 years ago and some, some of these days I have just look at things and I get immediate inspiration. I thought this would make a fabulous card. I find this very joyful. I think this would be nice as a get well soon card and it would be really easy to make and I will show you now how I will attend to do that. So all I need for that is two um, oval die cuts. I'm just using this um, straight oval from my um, even, sorry, straight and uh, scalloped edge dies. I've shown you these before. I will link to them below, but any oval die is fine. This one happens to be um, just under five and a half inches wide. So basically you decide with the size of your oval die how big the card is. Obviously you've also got the eyes then going on top. So let me just bring the purse back actually for reference. So I then had a look in my stash for round dies and the eyes here really are really big so I chose these dies here because I know they will cover almost the top of the card which will be really nice. Then uh, this by the way these are stitch dies but they don't have to be straight dies are fine as well I just happen to have these. And then I've got the smaller stitch dies but I decided to use those for the cheeks and for the eyes I've got one which is almost the same size as this stitch die here which I will use for the black. So have a look in your stash what goes together. So to create the mouth I thought at first maybe I would just draw it on which is an option but I have got these dies again they're stitch dies and they're a bit rounded so I thought if I use them like nesting dies and I can actually move them down further than I would if I needed a whole frame and I think this would just make a nice little mouth there and I can just cut it there and just have that bit down there and which is again great to use up scraps so I've got two scraps here for the eyes and for the mouth I've got a bit of pink I thought this pink would go really nicely with that green it would nicely clash rather than having the pale ones here but that's up to you so yeah really easy to do I'm going to die cut all these pieces and then I'll show you how to create the card base and how to yeah create the mouth although I've already just talked you through how I will do it. For the card base I have also cut um, a little white piece with the scalloped edge which is my next down nesting die but I've also cut a piece away there because where the fold is so I didn't record that but I just want to show you because I don't want the card to wobble I need a little base for the card so I'm just using both pieces here uh, make sure they sit evenly and I'm just cutting a slither away so I make sure they're in straight which is always a bit tricky with these um, oval dies with the round dies it doesn't matter so I don't know if you can see I've got about three millimeters but I'll show you once I've cut it so just cut this much off and you see and this will allow me to stand the card up afterwards so that's all I need to do with that and then I need to take one of these pieces and I need my scoreboard And I need to score this to give this uh, the right hinge. This is easy now to align because I've already cut this cut line. So I need to make sure that this one's straight. And this sits right next to this um, line here to the on the scoreboard. So I just need to get my score tool out, which I can slide. There it is. And I think... Yeah, I think I'll go for a half here. So I'm just putting my score tool in there and then going over the card there. And I'm just repeating this. And this will basically give us the hinge because this will fold back and the other card will sit on it. I'm just testing now whether I need to cut this down a bit more. Yes, so I can 
test this here now and I know I will need to take another slither off for this to sit on the inside. Again, I will do this off camera and then I'll show you how to glue it all together. I'm just using my collar glue with my slightly broken bottle if you watch that video, but it's still working fine. And the good thing about the collar glue is it gives me a bit of wiggle room. So if things are not in the right place, I can move them about a little bit. But I broke off the fine tip the other day when it was clogged. I got my pliers out, so the fine tip's gonna come off, but it's really nice, uh, still nice to use. So I'm just placing this one down here. And once you have placed it in the right position, just press it down and then it will adhere really nicely. So this is the one on the base with the flap. And now I can put the eyes on the circles here. So the pupils on the eyes there, on the big white circles. It doesn't really matter at the moment. Again, I'm using my little frog for reference. So because obviously until you glue them onto the card base, you can still move them about. But I want to have this close to the edge. So basically like there. And have the other one evenly. Just making sure it's, I've got the right same distance there and there. Yeah, I think that would be nice. So again, leaving that to sit. So this is my mouth, which I cut by putting the nesting dies really close together on that one corner. So, and again, for reference, I'm just checking how much I need. And I will just, could even count the little stitches here. Maybe that much. Just checking that it's the same on the other side, about here, just eyeballing this. But I think I will cut this a bit round or just the corners of there. I think this would be a bit nicer and it won't look as cut off. I don't know if you can see that there. So, yeah, I think that'll be fine. So, now I can glue this card base onto here, making sure that the line down here lines up with the top there when I glue it down. So I'll put glue on here. But then I'm lining it up on the other side. Make sure this is straight. Then move it about a bit. Then I'm pressing it down rather than pressing it down here first because then you know it's properly aligned and it'll be fine. And the card, I can show you that now once it's adhered. It will basically open like this because it folds there on the top and then you can sit it up like this which I think is really good. I've shown you other uh, versions before where we basically cut it from one piece, had a fold at the bottom, sorry, at the top, and then just uh, cut with a die outside of that fold so that it wouldn't cut all the way through. But I think this way you've got the whole curve there, which is really nice. So all that's left to do now is to stick the eyes on. And again, I'm using this for reference. You can play around with this. You can have the frog looking uh, in one direction, or you can have this one, or like this. But I think I like the straight one. And again, I will actually use my grid here to make sure this is the middle line, that I don't move them over too much. So, and then I got an idea where I need to put the glue as well because I don't need glue on the whole of the eye. By the way, this uh, cardstock is like this is 300 years old. It was a scrap and I think it's quite useful to have something sturdy because it was it will obviously overhang and then it won't um, be damaged. So again, this is the middle line. So I'm popping it here. got 
the one. Yeah, I've got it right now. And then the other one, accordingly. So I'm also using the grid to check the top of the eyes. Just get it as evenly as possible. Might have to twist it a little bit. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because so once I've got the eyes down, and this one's actually a bit higher, but it doesn't matter. So once I've got the eyes down, I can then put the cheeks and the mouth on. For this one, I think I will actually use my glue pen because it is really fine. And because it's got the stitched edge, I don't know if the camera picks that up, the glue is likely to ooze out. So with this one here, this is my Zig two-way glue. This is really nice for adhering intricate die cuts. So I'm just dabbing this on and it's blue to start with. And once it turns clear, it's tacky and ready to be put on. So putting that at the bottom, again, sort of in the middle. Could have probably done with a slightly bigger mouth, but it doesn't matter. That's the character of this frog. And all I need to do now is to uh, put the cheeks on. So a really easy card to make. I think this would be nice for children's birthdays as well. Or yeah, a thankful card because it is so cheerful. I can't believe how easy it is. And as I said, I only just got the inspiration in my craft room. This is really battered now. Um, 2004, it says on the back. As I said, it's, it feels like it's 15 years old. Yeah, there's my little froggy card. And then... Obviously, if you want to stamp something, it might be useful to stamp it in first before you put the top on, but the recipient can open it up like this completely, as I said, and then it can sit like this. Yeah, very nice. I've got an idea who gets this card. Uh, a dear friend of mine, she likes anything cheerful, and yeah, she will appreciate this card. If you like this card too, you might want to give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, I usually post on a Wednesday and a Sunday. You might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.